a thousand apologies for the late start. I've been having some technical difficulties with this new page. Um, so please bear with me. Um, but I'm very, very grateful that we got it rectified and that we're here. And so many of you, you know, I mean, in this time are safe and alive and, um, you know, able to, to, if you can't watch it live, share it after all. Um, and I just want to say a thank you again and a big shout out to all our patrons who make this possible. Um, this evening, I uh, we have a new patron, uh, Cheryl Artis. I want to say thank you so very much. So we have Tashona, we have Nadia, we have Andrea, uh, we have, who else do we, I, I'm hoping I didn't miss out anybody. Simone, thank you so very, very much. And it's a, ple it's a pleasure to be here this evening. And I want to talk about something that um, is really, really important. Uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to pursue a life of a life of purpose or things that you want to do, um, but you've been very, very hesitant about it for one reason or the other. You're fearful, um, you know, you don't know if it's the right move. One of the things that you have to know how to do is to grow in public, right? You know, I recently spoke to a student who said that, you know, um, you know, she's not going to be doing any acting and putting it up on YouTube or anything like that because she free, she's afraid of judgment. And that's a real thing, especially in this day and age of the internet where, you know, persons are always very, very concerned about, you know, how people, cyberbullying is a real thing, you know, and people are now being persecuted for their opinions, for their beliefs. So I understand, you know, the hesitation where that is concerned. You know, um, quite recently I saw a TikToker and from Trinidad and Tobago had to make a report uh, to the police because of cyberbullying and, and you know, that ought not to be. People should be able to express themselves, talk about their beliefs and all that kind of stuff, but it's just not the reality. And, and so when you have to overcome that, you have to be able to grow in public, right? So without any further ado, let's just start as we would normally start with a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are and we thank you for being able to do this motivational monday i pray lord god that my voice will be just used as a tool and an instrument for you that someone would be helped someone will be assisted about what i'm about to speak and lord god somebody most importantly will be blessed and we move to do something to Jesus christ i pray amen right guys so now that we have now that you know the topic we want to talk about growing public right Growing in public. And that's not an easy thing to do. First to begin, right? Nobody really knows who you are. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Nobody really knows who you are. Most people associate their last memory of you or your character with who you are. And I'll give you a simple example, right? I went on a 10-day hiatus, so I, I disconnected from internet, I disconnected from emails, from, you know, I mean, I, I was not reachable, not even by my family members, right? And the person who left to go on that hiatus and the person who came back are two different people. Essentially, yes, I am the same Stephen Edwards, but my characteristics and my traits, the way that I speak, the way that I function, the way that I operate is different. And people often relate to you on their last memory of you. So for instance, if people remember you a particular, like they are persons who don't like me today because of how I was in high school. In high school, I was a bully, right? I beat real fellas in school. Right? For, no, for no good reason, right? And that was because 
I had a lot of aggression issues that I was dealing with, right? I was young. I was, it, it doesn't make what I did right. And I, I'm quite aware that I have hurt a lot of people, you know, and some people I can't even remember, you know what I mean? But that is not who I am today. But if you ask anybody who knows me from high school, right? And they say, you know, Steve Meadows, yeah, he's a real, right? A who, right? Because I know sometimes I have children listening. So, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that that is not who I am. But that is their last memory of me. So people tend to deal with you from their last memory of what they know you to be. And you have to understand that. And you have to be in a position where you cannot be con so consumed with who you were, right? That you lose touch of who you are and who you are being, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a continuous process. For instance, I'll give you a simple example. One of the things is I was always late for everything. You know what I mean? If I had to submit something, I'd always be late. If I had to do something, I'd, I, I, I would be late and I, I, would, I won't call, I won't. Now, again, if you would have dealt with me in that period of my life, let's, let's say that was 10 years ago, right? then what is your opinion of me? That I'm unreliable. But that's not who I am today, right? And many of us are walking around with the shadows of who they were. And, you know, it's not easy because, especially for persons who are trying to do something, right? You're, you're, you're trying to start a business. You're trying to do something. And that business fails. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. Right? And many people walk around with some of their, 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 their past issues, right? And not being able to shake that away, but that's how people will see me. So you carry that fear now that people will think that I am a failure because I have failed at some point in time in your life. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? And the, the fact of the matter is, that's not who you are. You, you have been doing things, you have been, you've been growing, you've been, you continue to grow, you continue to get better at the things that you do, especially when you're living a life of purpose. You begin to evolve in such a way, right? But you have to understand that people will always treat you with their last memory of you. And so it's very important that when you're growing in public, that you make people understand, listen, these are my value systems. This is what I represent. You understand? This is who I am. Whether you choose to believe me or not, that is okay, right? But the thing about it is that if you don't put those stipulations and boundaries in place, people will always treat you with their last memory of you. So it's, let's say, for instance, I'm going to give you a simple example. We're going to dumb it down. Let's say you have a friend right who always hits you in your in the back every time they see you. hey boy oh hey yeah bap! and they hit you in your back right and then you don't like it but you never said anything what what happens that is a custom for them so they are custom treating you and see every time they greet you they slap you in your back but they never knew that you didn't like it right and so one day you decide to tell them about it what happens then? The relationship changes because their memory of who you are is that, hey, you didn't mind, right? And it's okay for that relationship to change because you need to grow. You can't keep getting your back slap all the time and next thing you know, you start getting whooping call for some kind of thing, right? The point I'm trying to make is that you have to be able to grow in public. And in order for you to grow in public, you have to put your boundaries and let people know exactly who you are. People won't know if you don't tell them. And sometimes by being quiet, we, we, we inadvertently give people permission to treat us a certain way. Another thing that I want you to, to, to really consider is sometimes you don't know who you are. All right? Why? And I, 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 Because of sometimes what you believe of what was said about you. 
So for instance, I have never thought of myself as ever being handy, right? So I, I would never try to do any plumbing or I would never try. But you know something, whenever I do watch somebody do something, I found myself being able to learn, right? And I can't do it. But I've been told so many times that you're not handy, right? That I begin to believe it. So every time I see anything that is is any way related to any kind of construction or so, so I shy away from it. Because in my mind, I am I I I have told myself that I am not handy, right? When it turns out I paint extremely well. I, I mean, I've been painting since I've been going to school and I've been painting houses and that, that's how I used to get money to go to school and that kind of stuff. And I've been quite adept at it, right? But the thing about it is that I have always told myself that I'm not very good with stuff around the house, right? Which is not necessarily true. And until I decide that, listen, I am going to give this a try, right? Then I cannot grow. And sometimes we have to know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, then we can't expect people to treat us in, in a, any particular way because we don't know ourselves. So there, there, there are some people that I've met and I, you know, I may tell them, hey, listen, you have a talent for this and you have a talent for that. And they say, really? I've never seen that before, right? But the fact that you've never seen that before doesn't mean that you're not gifted. And many times we go around thinking that we can't do certain things because we've convinced ourselves or we have allowed others to convince us that we can't do a thing. And the thing about it is, is that we have to now understand, listen, I am growing every day. I'm gaining knowledge every day. I am improving every single day. So if I want to do this thing, what loss can I possibly have in trying? In order to grow in public, we have to be willing to try. And if we fail, we fail. But at least we get to find out what we're good at, what we can't do. What is What happens if we do fail? Think about it. If, let's say, for instance, I try to make a table and the table doesn't come out the way that it was supposed to, did I die? Did, did, was it the end of the world? No. But we have a mortal fear of failing because we think that persons would laugh at us. And therefore, we, we don't, we are very unwilling to try new things or try things that we don't even know that we may or may not be good at because we are always worrying about what other people will see, what other people are watching. And you know what I found out? Most people are very busy living their lives that they don't have time to look at yours. And if they do have time to look at yours, nine out of 10 times, that's because they envy you. Yeah. If somebody have the time to be looking at what you do all the time, there's something about you that they admire, something about you that they, they see that they want, something about you that they, they, they like, and they just don't know how to say, you know what I mean? I like you. We have a, like, I, and this has, yeah, Toshona, you would have, because there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. What, what is the worst thing that happened if you, you try something and it didn't work out? You ever, and ladies could relate to this. You ever go down where you know you're looking good, you dress up and you're looking nice, and you would go to a place and this woman would be watching you and she would stare at you, right? And she wouldn't say anything. But if she has to leave or pass by you, she would make a comment like, I have earrings just like that. Or I have a jacket just like that. And what she really means to say is, 
I think your jacket is beautiful. But because she cannot bring herself, and you see, this is an insecurity in that person. This has nothing to do with you. And you have to understand that when people criticize you for trying something, they're not criticizing you really, you know. They are actually insecure in themselves. And they are saying that if this person is trying this, why have I been sitting on this for so long? Why have I not done anything for so long? It may not even be the same thing, but it might be you want to get into business, but that person wanted to do something else that they have never tried. And because you display the courage to do that, which they have failed to do, it becomes almost a raise in their insecurities. So now what they do, they attack you and they comment. And so the other the other point I want to make is, is that don't take it personal. When you're growing in public, you can't afford to take it personal. Because most times that hate or that, you know, you, you know, they say haters gonna hate, that 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 criticism that is coming towards you, right? It's because that, that person is operating from a level of insecurity. Now, it's different than if you have a mentor or you have somebody who genuinely interested in, in what you're doing, right? And they say, listen, no, I think, you know, I think if you try this, it might do better or whatever the case might be. And you have to be very careful because people who love you, right, still don't know you. And people who love you could all can only carry you so far because nine out of ten times they have only gone so far. So if you're trying to go at a level higher than that, they really can't advise you. And again, you can't take it personal, right? You can't expect average people, right, to understand great things. They're neither good nor bad, but they're just average. And and it's 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 just that. If you want to do something great, right, and the person who was advising you make sure that they are pursuing greatness themselves. And they are on that journey of where they are, are, are may have gone a little further than you, right? Or they are aspiring alongside you. But be very, very careful when you grow in public who you listen to and don't take it personal. If you take it personal, what is going to happen is that you are going to start always second guessing yourself. And what happens is that when you're growing in public and you start moving forward and things start happening for you, right? And you start second guessing yourself, you start to regress, you start to shrink. Because you have to remember, every time you move beyond a certain point, you 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 gather up the 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 the, the thing the gumption, the courage to do something. And now you start to doubt yourself. So now it's, it's like this, right? You've, you've done your first speech or you've done your first sale. And then you start to backpedal and say, now nah, I wonder if this will start to work out. You, you've already gone, move on, continue going, continue growing, continue moving because people are going to talk. And the bigger that you get, right, as you begin to grow in public, the, the more the comments are. Understand that that comes with territory. That comes with the territory of you trying to grow into something. Because people will be like, hey, 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 how it is, right? It's like this. You will tell somebody, listen, I want to start to lose a little weight, right? <laughs> you want to lose a little weight? You'll behave yourself, eh? Right. And then you start going to the gym, right? You go one day, you go two days. <laughs> you go into the gym, just now you see you, you will drop out, right? But then you decide that you're not going to drop out. You're going to keep it consistent. Then the comment will be, you still doing that? Girl, who going you know with you? You let me go and do something else now. This is your friend, eh? This is not an enemy. This is not an enemy. Then you start going to the gym and your body starts changing. Right? Now here's where this come, you know. Instead of the, and you waiting to say, well, you know I mean? You waiting to hear, well, congratulations. 
you know, um, Gil, you really, you really stick with it. I'm really proud of you. That's not what you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear, huh? look at she. Cause she body getting now. She feels better than people. When all you wanted to do was get healthier, right? And so that person is operating out of their insecurity because before she could have said, well, this is my fat friend. You understand what I'm saying? And so it was convenient. Again, this person is neither good nor bad. They're just average and this is the average person. So if you're going to think you're going to say what, you're going to stop talking to the whole world? No. I'm giving you this information so that you can arm yourself mentally and understand how human beings operate and understand, you know, how they're going to relate to you. And then you, you're not that disappointed because you understand exactly, all right, this is, this is just part of the territory. But you have to appreciate your growth. You have to not stop because you're afraid of what other people will say. And so tonight I encourage you, whatever that part is, wherever you think that you, God is leading you to go, grow, grow, go and grow with God. God bless you. Good night.